Now let's talk more about the receptors that the neurotransmitters bind to. So neurotransmitters are released from the presynaptic neuron. Let's go here, here we go. Our presynaptic neuron releases neurotransmitters. Those are going to diffuse across the synaptic cleft, you could label this, and bind to receptors on the postsynaptic neuron. And this is how the signal passes from one cell to the next. So now we need to talk about um, the types of receptors as well as some specific actions the receptors, different receptors have. So first, there's two broad categories of receptors um, that are called direct or ionotropic, or, and I'll walk through that one first, um, and then we'll walk through the second kind. This one's a little simpler, and we'll actually focus more on this for the nervous system um, this, at this time point, and then we'll come back to the other type when we talk about the autonomic nervous system a whole lot more. So ionotropic refers to those, these ion channels. So what do you think this protein here is? There's a gate here, it's a channel. So it is a chemically gated ion channel. It's gonna open up when one of these neurotransmitters, a chemical messenger, comes along and binds to it. That's gonna cause it to open. It's just gonna be a fast response. It's direct, one step pretty much. Um, opening up that channel and allowing ions to move either in or out of the cell. Which way they move is gonna depend on what channel it is. So we're gonna have opens ion channels. This is a chemically gated ion channel. These are typically sodium channels, or potassium, potassium channels, or chloride channels are the most common. And it only opens a few milliseconds. Um, so this is gonna allow these molecules, these, these ions to flow down there electrochemical gradients. So we'll come back to the way that those flow, but you should be able to do that yourself. Think about which way each of these flows if a channel for it opens. Okay, the second mechanism for um, these receptors, second type of receptor, are metabotropic receptors. These are also called indirect because they're um, effects are indirect. They take more than one step. Does this protein look familiar? Do you remember the name of this? This is a G protein coupled receptor. I told you they'd come back. So cell signaling, this was one type of cell signaling. This receptor binds to its neurotransmitter. Let me draw that in there. The neurotransmitter is going to come along and bind here. It's a different color. Just go with it. Um, I can make it red, here we go. Um, and when that binds, it's going to activate a G protein. This is gonna have met potentially many effects on the cell. You remember CAMP? So cyclic, cyclic AMP is a second messenger. The second messenger is going to have effects on the cell. So the one example we saw was activate kinases. What do kinases do? They phosphorylate proteins. So this could have effects on turning proteins, other enzymes on, um, to have various metabolic effects. So metabotropic refers to the idea there could be metabolic effects. That's at least how I remember it. It also can indirectly open ion channels. So we'll come back to some examples of that. We'll actually be focusing a little bit more on the direct mechanism for now, but you will see some of these in the future. Okay, so let's go back to glutamate and GABA and, and look at those receptors. So because there's these different types of receptors, for every neurotransmitter, it can actually bind to more than one type of receptor. So this makes signaling complicated um, depending on what receptors are present on a cell, you can have different effects. And that's super important um, for how our bodies work. And it's also an example of differential gene expression. So cell A and cell B can have different receptors um, and that makes them respond differently. And those receptors can actually even be for the same neurotransmitter, but still have different effects. <laughs> we'll see this a lot in the autonomic nervous system. Not a lot, sometimes. 
So here are some examples of receptors. Don't get overwhelmed by the detail in this. Um, the point here is to kind of give you some idea of the complexity. So here are glutamate receptors, and they are typically, they're always excitatory, despite the fact that these different names are here. So these different names down here, mGluR, kinate, AMP receptors, NMDA receptors, um, yes, that is NMDA that you're thinking of. Those are all excitatory receptors that bind, glutamate binds to them. Um, you don't need to know the names of those specifics. In all cases, um, some, and some of these are direct and some of these are indirect. So this one here, this is a metabotropic receptor. So glutamate can bind to both ionotropic and metabotropic. Um, the one that we're going to see the most often, so the way I would remember glutamate, is by, it, it's going to open Na plus Ca2 plus channels. Channels that allow both sodium and um, calcium to flow into the cell. And these two are both going to have the same effects on the cell when they enter the cell. So the point of this is to show you that there are different receptor types. Glutamate could have a slightly different effect in one, on one cell than it does on another. It's still gonna be excitatory. The other thing you'll see here is all these different other molecules, what's going on here. So for, for GABA, this is the GABA receptor and there's other binding sites besides GABA. Here's the GABA binding site right here and other molecules can also bind to GABA. So barbiturates and alcohol are kind of sedatives Benzodiazepines are um, like Valium, so GABA is inhibitory, and it GABA itself, when it binds to this receptor, is inhibitory, but also can be modulated by these other sites that can be bound. So this is, again, our main inhibitory. So it's actually, we will be looking at it and simplifying it down to the fact that it opens um, chloride channels. And you should be able to think about what that does. So this example here is an ionotropic example. This is class A. We're not going to look at any other types. So a couple main points from this slide. Different receptors exist for every neurotransmitter. So the effects of neurotransmitters varies. But we will be trying to make some generalizations so we can talk about things. Um, one is that glutamate opens calcium and sodium channels. And then GABA opens chloride channels. And then we'll talk about what this means for the cell.